G'day and welcome back to day number four on the final uh, build for my Sling TSI up here at Heckfield. And it's going to be moving day today. So uh, basically you're going to be going through and fixing wings uh, and all the tail as well too. So obviously the plane's going to start to look like a plane, which is going to be awesome. And, uh, and just finishing off a lot of the other jobs in terms of the wiring and lights and all that type of stuff. The interior is basically all done in terms of the upholstery. Uh, so yeah, it just it's starting to get to be bits and pieces now and the end is on the horizon for me. I uh, can't wait to show you the progress throughout the day. So as mentioned at the start of the intro there, uh, big focus today is on the tail. And it's another one of those milestone moments James is installing the horizontal stabiliser. It provides our pitch stability, keeping the aircraft level in the nose up or nose down axis. And also obviously the hinge surface at the back edge of the stabiliser is the elevator, which the pilot uses to control pitch, nose up and down. From there, we sort of pan out and give you a nice overview of how the plane's coming together. We jump across to yesterday's work, the gluing down of the windscreen and getting those edges sealed up nice and snug. We'll move up into the engine bay and you'll see the, us prepping everything, in particular the battery terminals, getting everything ready for that final connection piece. And finally we're in the inside there now, showing you how the interior is shaping up. The carpet's in, side panels are fitted, still a couple of little things to go on the carpet but nearly there. It's all coming together. So stay tuned for more details throughout the day. So with the horizontal control surfaces installed, it was now onto the vertical component, which obviously starts with the stabiliser, or vertical stabiliser. And this control surface obviously uh, provides our directional stability in flight, or yaw, as it's more commonly known. Bang. Lastly, we're installing the rudder onto the vertical stabiliser. The rudder is the primary flight control responsible for yaw. That's the side-to-side -side movement around the vertical axis. It's hinged along the trailing edge and it's connected via control cables to the pedals in the cockpit. And then coming back into the cockpit, Errol smashing out all of our labels for our switches and circuit breakers, making that off. nice and tight. And it's sort of fairly in a straight line. About to go flying in the sling two, just get a bit of uh, air time. So I cannot wait to get up in the air, it's very windy at the moment, but uh, looking forward to it. Alrighty, so one of the things obviously that um, I needed to get checked off before I started flying this TSI was getting some time in a sling. Um, so the guys from Pathfinder Aviation, David Stevens, was able to help me out. I spent the afternoon up in this sling too today, which is a newly uh, minted VH registered sling too. Uh, it was so good. It was so good. It was, a, it was a little bit windy. For those that have flown at Heckfield probably know that, you know, Heckfield in itself is a pretty pretty tough little airport. It's narrow. It's, it's a little bit shorter. But yeah, and there was a bit of wind today. But I just loved it. Uh, the Sling 2 was so easy to control and it just makes me really look forward to the TSI. So I spent probably about an hour and a half up there and I went through I uh, did some stalls, did some steep turns, just all the normal stuff, straight and level, just got myself familiar. It's been five months since I've been in a plane. Uh, and then David came in to the circuit and sort of handled the majority of the radio for me, which was good, took a bit of the pressure off. And then, uh, and then he came in and demonstrated the first, first, uh, first landing. And, and what I found was it was a very predictable, predictable aircraft, which is exactly what I was after. Uh, and then I landed probably the next six or seven uh, and pretty good, like 
from from five months of no aviation, I was pretty happy with sort of how it all panned out. Uh, this little plane is just unreal. Just really, really, really easy to control and just, uh, yeah, really nice. So glad that I did that. And now the plan is that basically uh, when I take the keys for the sling, I'm probably gonna spend a good three days of just solid sort of four or five hour days with David um, flying in and around all the Brisbane airspace and getting ourselves out and about and just flying some of the routes that I will be flying in. Uh, so, and just spending a lot of time. Just wanna make sure that I'm safe before I get anyone in with me and then also fly this thing back myself. Um, just in the back of my head, I've just got my family that I'm thinking about. So I wanna make sure I'm as safe as I possibly can be. Um, and basically I'll do as much training here as I need to before David says you're good to go and take it back. But um, yeah, if you're looking at buying a sling TSI, obviously the transition training is something that you need to think about. Um, the guys have got a really good contact here at Pathfinder Avi Aviation and I uh, can't recommend that enough. We've got a uh, tail assembly now fully on, which is awesome. And a lot of the electrics have now started to be wired up. We've got a panel that's starting to get labeled in here. There's lots of stickers going on the plane. My rego's on there. Um, I'll just show you a little bit of that stuff. So obviously we've got the tail, our rego, Kilo Charlie Bravo. Uh, inside, you know, as I said before, all of our upholstery is now in. I just started to get our um, panel. You can see there we're starting to get labels on. So that's all really, really good. The windscreen now, um, the saga of the windscreen. There's a lot of effort that goes into fitting a windscreen I found. I glued it down yesterday, so it's all in place. All that hard work that James did, grinding it, getting it um, to the point where it was well shaped. That obviously wasn't the last piece. The other, the other piece was obviously to, to fit it. Um, so there was a lot of taping and prep work involved in that. And then basically once it was in place and glued and um, all in place, we then, uh, we then had to rip all the tape off and then do it again because basically all this part, part here is gonna be painted matte black. And you can sort of see here, we've done that for the rear windows as well. And then coming across over onto the far side over here, we've had to do it all the way through obviously. Uh, rear window over here. And then obviously then as well to our doors. So our doors had to sort of go through the same sort of treatment. So heaps of prep work there. You just sort of see in the background there, there's a little bag there from Flight Store. So one of the things that I did today was uh, I went in and I got a bit of a um, camera mount. So that's probably for our next stage of the sling. So went and got an exterior ball head, ball headed mount there. The guys at Flight Store were super. So uh, there's something to be said for being able to go into a store and touch and feel things uh, so that was uh, really really good to be able to do that i uh, had a lot of expertise as well and so ends the second last day of my build assist journey with errol and his team up here on the gold coast this last stint has just been an absolute head spinner so much good stuff coming together lots of stuff that i'd imagined in my head and all of a sudden seeing it in the flesh was just super and I can tell you the last day, which is the Friday, we absolutely make a huge amount of progress and it's actually mind blowing to see what the end product looks like as I walk out the doors on Friday, but that's for the next episode. I'm now amazingly over 20 episodes deep into this series, something that I didn't really expect when I first started. I hope for those people that have been hanging in there and watching the build series from start through to finish, I've given you the context that I just didn't have when I first started this build assist process here in Australia. There was no material here in Australia, and now there is. But what makes me even happier is that the material that I've created has actually been the precursor for a number of individuals that are now seeking out the build assist experience themselves. That just makes me super happy. My job's not done though. The build assist was the first part. The second part is showing how the TSI performs in Australian conditions. I still have so many questions that I need to answer myself and in turn show you. I know that if I'm asking questions, there's still questions out there to be answered. 
I can't wait to show you the last episode and Kilo Charlie Bravo in all her glory. Until next time, thanks for supporting me.